Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are going to get real with these villagers. We are going to recruit a few more villagers who are eventually going to form the basis of my new trading hall, and I'm super excited to get stuck into the rest of the villager trades, because there are so, so many really, really useful villager trades. And along the way, we are probably going to start developing some farms that will help us provide some of the easy easy to farm resources, some stuff that we can farm locally instead of going further afield. For example, the leather worker, of course, is going to be trading us for leather, so it would help to have a cow farm around that is maybe a little bit more industrial than the one I've got in the farmland barn down there and is going to provide us with a ton of leather if we come through with a looting sword or even if we don't because I'm pretty sure cows will drop leather if they are killed through any means. They might be a player kill drop but I don't think they are and so that means we can kind of automate the production of leather that will allow us to get a few uh, a few more trades out of this leather worker. Likewise, rabbit hide. I've never really farmed rabbits in Minecraft when there are so many other things that you can farm both for food and for the resources rabbits provide. Like four, rabbit hide turns into one leather and there is no other use for rabbit hide in the game as of yet. Having said that, we could also farm rabbits to get rabbit's feet, which I'm fairly certain is one of the trades you can trade with a cleric in exchange for emeralds. So it's kind of nice to have a variety of things coming from one animal all of which can be traded away. Like, you're not really wasting any part of it there. So I feel like a rabbit farm, brutal though it may seem to kill lots of fluffy rabbits, we might actually have to do that at some point soon if we want to make full, effective use of the trades available to us. That's kind of my plan for this villager trading hall, is to get everything if not all in one place, then at least easily accessible and to make use of all of the trades which are going to make us some easy emeralds. We've already got melon and pumpkin farms that we can use to trade with this farmer. We've got a carrot farm up there on the hill as well. We could also get potatoes, even though this farmer doesn't trade potatoes, we will probably encounter a farmer that does. Wheat, we have a massive field for over there and I feel like the wheat trade is by and large not the best trade that farmers can have, so we might ignore that one or just trade it occasionally, but I think it's going to be good to have some stuff like that around. Maybe we can look into some slightly more advanced nano crop farms now that there are a few different mechanics we can work with for those in 1.14. The Cartographer as well is going to be able to trade us some cool stuff. The Cartographer has his glass pane trade, which is of course something that we could go out to a desert to farm, but I am more interested in getting glass from librarians. Not only because it makes glass an easily renewable resource, so we don't have to use up all that sand, but because those can then be converted into glass panes, which can be traded with cartographers for, once again, some easy emeralds. So I think today, even though enchanted books aren't necessarily a priority, we are going to try and get hold of some librarians. But first of all, an addition that I have made to the villager trading booths here, I have a daylight sensor on top of a trapdoor here above their workstation of choice. And that not only means that monsters can't get in, like baby zombies couldn't hop up into there because they won't be able to get into a block that has a trapdoor on top of it, but also when day turns to night, the daylight sensor triggers and the trapdoor closes, which does not seem to have any effect on the zombies. The zombies can still pathfind to them. I think they are still seeing the villagers through the blocks. They are still seeing the tiny little scrap of the farmer's hat <laughs> that's peeking through there or something. And the, vi the villagers are still kind of bait for the zombies. However, it does kind of protect them from anything else that might accidentally shoot at them, like skeletons if I'm running around this area or something like that. A stray arrow could hit one of these villagers and I don't really want that to happen. Also, could potentially be a an approach we could use to protect the villagers from pillagers. If we had a master switch that covered up these daylight sensors with a block or something like that, if we ended up having a block on top of there, there we go. That actually counts as blocking the daylight sensor, and you can use that actually for some wireless redstone, which is pretty cool. We will probably look into that at some point in future, but for now, it's kind of nice to know that we could shut off all of the trapdoors here in the event of a pillager attack, and then our villagers would be safe from stray crossbow bolts. But I have not noticed any new villagers dropping down. Oh, oh, I have. <laughs> I was going to say, I've not noticed any new villagers dropping down into here, but we do have one villager who seems to have come down from the mountains via this aqueduct to join us. Fantastic. Once you grow up, I will be able to turn you into a librarian, put you over here, and we will see what trades you can give us. But... I was a little bit concerned that our friends up here on the boat on the mountain might be potentially 
attached to some of the beds in the crop farm and that might mean that the villager breeder is not able to operate fully and so I came up here and I figured I would probably take these guys out of the boat today there's two of them in there I'll probably get them back into another boat and just row them down the mountainside one at a time so we can convert them into librarians as well we're gonna need a lot of librarians the plan is eventually to have a trade available for every single enchanted book and hopefully to get the prices down to something a little bit more reasonable however I have made a couple of observations about some stuff that's happening up here in this farm and let me tell you the results are a little bit janky first of all <laughs> around here I noticed the legs of a couple of villagers who seem to have somehow found their heads up in the farm and that is farmland up there so it's not going to suffocate them because it doesn't technically count as a full block but these guys are sort of stuck up in the farmland. I have no idea how they managed to pathfind up there, but now they just seem to be stuck there. So we're going to do something about that. We can take out the blocks underneath them. That is not a problem. And then I discovered this little fella who was wandering around on top of the aqueduct. So clearly some villagers have been able to make it outside of this setup. And I kind of want to make sure that we can cordon this off a little bit today. So I'm going to make a couple of changes to this. But this guy, I ended up putting him in a boat. I tried to get back into the boat after that, and this is probably what those other villagers are seeing over there. <laughs> the villagers who are stuck in the farmland are probably seeing in carrot vision. So, yeah, a little bit glitchy, a little bit glitchy, but that's fine. We can just row ourselves down off of this, and we're out. Okay, good. That's, <laughs> that's nice. I'm glad that we're able to get ourselves out of here. Now, let's see if we can just make a nice little bridge over here so that we can drop down in a safe spot. I'm going to bring the other villagers down from the mountainside one at a time. We're going to see what we can do about giving them professions and putting them to work in our new trading hall. A short time later, we have our villagers down from the mountainside, and from the looks of things, the villager breeder is now behaving as it should. We have three kids in here, one adult, they're going to start growing up fairly soon. We should have a decent population of villagers that we can introduce to the trading hall. But I've encountered a couple of problems here, some problems that I should really have foreseen when I started setting this place up, and that is that these guys had workstations in front of them which the villagers I brought down from the mountainside were actually able to claim. Because these guys are now masters, or at least like they're above the novice level, they don't need to have the workstation in front of them in order to keep that profession. And so it was being traded off with some of the other villagers, and the other villagers were becoming a leather worker or a farmer. I haven't actually seen any that have turned into a cartographer, but I think he's too far away. So... I really want to set up a system where we can control what the villagers trade is first before we send them out into the trading hall. So this is going to require a little bit more infrastructure and ideally it's also going to require an area where we can convert the villager into a zombie villager and then cure it again so that by the time they end up in the trading hall they're already going to have really good prices for their trades. So we're going to do a little bit of stuff with this section here. I think this is where we're going to be collecting all of the villagers and then whenever we want to get a new villager we are going to have a minecart pick them up through the corner once this area gets a little bit more full that should be a lot easier and that's going to allow us to drag the villager off into an area where they can be attacked by a zombie since we're playing on hard mode they will be able to convert into a zombie villager with a hundred percent success rate and then from there we can cure them give them a profession and send them off into the trading hall the one thing we need to remember throughout that process is that the workstations in the trading hall need to be inaccessible to the villagers we don't want to have them to have line of sight we don't want them to be able to pathfind to them or at least think that they can pathfind to them which seems to be the case even if they are shut in a box or if they've got a boat so yeah we need to make sure that we are being super careful with how we end up assigning these villagers professions if we want to get the stuff that we want to get. I also need to make sure that there aren't too many beds around because this happens and sooner or later we should start to see whoa <laughs> that was that was some villager breeding happening although not quite the way these two intended. There we go thunderclaps that's what I was looking for so that signifies that they're not able to breed because they cannot find any more beds around here for the uh, young villagers to sleep in and that's ideal because we don't want this population in here exploding when we get a ton of adult villagers. So 
So I think, yeah, what we're going to do is set up a minecart that's going to pick them up from this corner here, take them into a separate building that's going to have a zombie in it. We can assign the profession, we can attack them with the zombie, cure them, and then send them straight off into the trading hall. So this is all pretty temporary for now. Let's say we have a pathway coming up to the pit here where all of the villagers are hanging out in the water. We have a powered rail that's going to collect them in a minecart and take them back down this way. They will end up stopping on this rail here. We could even make that a powered rail so that we can uh, control that with a button to send the minecart back off once the villager ends up getting cured. Now with the sticky piston down here we can put a dot of redstone dust and whatever blocks we want over the top of that. Let's make a lever and then that is going to attach to that block and we can use the lever to retract that block so that we can place a workstation in front of them and that means it's going to assign whatever profession they get. Has any... Oh, <laughs> that guy over there seems to think he can pathfind to this lectern and has turned into a librarian. So let's see what he thinks he's got. Okay, nothing that I really want right now. Let's uh, get rid of this. And I think right now, if I take him out of the boat, he's going to pathfind to the area where he thinks the lectern is, and that's going to cause him to lose his profession. Although, they do seem to want to socialize right now. I think it might be getting towards the end of the day. So, we'll put him back in the boat for now. By tomorrow, he's probably going to have forgotten what his profession was. So, in theory, we can have something to power this powered rail. Let's just use a button here for now. We can use that to send a minecart off to the pool of villagers to try and pick one up. It's only going to be able to pick up adult villagers because it's on this level here and it looks like none of them were close enough to the corner at that moment. So we could try a couple more times. We press this button here, it goes away, picks up a villager from the pool, brings him over here. We can move this block out of the way with the lever and place down a lectern, which is going to be his workstation of choice. And I think that's probably still assigning itself to that villager over there or one of the other villagers in the area. Yep, it looks like these two probably need to be moved out of the way if that's the case. Maybe we can move them over to the pool. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? The wandering trader literally spawned right as I looked in that direction too. Okay, I moved the, uh, the guys who thought they were librarians into here and it looks like they've now lost their profession. So we can start trying to trade, yes, okay, with this guy. And once we break and replace the lectern, his trades should shuffle around a little bit there we go and he is the only guy who can see or access this lectern right now so it's working out for us thorns three okay there is a book i do not see every day all right so uh in theory what we would now do is trade with him once to lock in his trades and that would mean that even if he was turned into a zombie he would still keep the same trades and have them again when he was cured then what we would do is press another button or a lever or something that would switch the track around sending him off towards the chamber with a zombie in it or maybe even use this corner here to pop a zombie up <laughs> from the bottom there and have the zombie attack this guy's legs. Once he was turned into a zombie, we could retract the other zombie down. Here we could uh, cure this guy once again and then his trades would be dramatically reduced and he could get sent off via a different track into the trading hall. I think that's going to work out really well for us. Of course, that relies on us being able to capture a zombie, but I don't think that should be a problem. And I think if we have his head pop up in here, then he should still be able to attack the villager's legs. So, yeah, let me find a zombie. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> I think we've got two. <laughs> I think we actually have two in there. That's ridiculous. Okay, uh, let's let's sleep again. Let's make sure that these guys are covered over. I think at least one of them will be, although they might try and wander around. So let's get a, yeah, let's get a dirt block or two above there and we'll be able to sort out what we can do here. And it looks like a zombie has also gotten in with our friends, the villagers, which is a little bit of a problem because I do keep trying to shoot at the zombie and I end up shooting the villagers instead. There we go. Oh, hopefully these guys are still okay with me after that. That was a bit of a problem. However, since I mentioned the other day that they do forget the positive gossip that they share when you uh, cure a zombie villager, they actually also now forget negative gossip as well, or they should at least. So hopefully no harm done. And if they raise their prices, then I'm pretty sure after curing a couple of them, we can get down to lowering them again. Having killed one of the zombies in here, we're now down to just one, and he's going to be standing on that dark prismarine block back there. Underneath that, we have a sticky piston that's going to push him up into a region where he can attack the villager's legs, and that's going to allow him to uh, convert the villager into a zombie villager without the villager being able to escape at all. Okay, with the block above his head and the piston below him, he is now trapped in here, and all we 
we should need to do is get a lever, attach that to a repeater or two, and we should be able to zombify this villager whenever we want to. Now the big question is, is this zombie going to attack the villager if the villager is his primary target? Because I think right now he's tracking me, uh, but if I step away for a little bit here, maybe he'll start attacking the villager. I think I might actually have to put the zombie on top of a slab instead of a full block here, which is going to be tricky to do <laughs> at this point, but maybe if we swap this out with a slab. Be right back. Okay, with one and a half block space there, the zombie was able to zombify the villager quite easily, but now the villager is out of the minecart, which could be a problem, and I think it is blocking the minecart from moving. There we go, we can pick up the zombie villager, bring him back here, and then send him off on the next stage of the circuit, which is going to bring him up around here. Now, of course, we'll need to have something that when we press the button again, moves this track around and we can move him into a curing booth here, which I will need more blocks to build, of course. For now, we'll bring him around here manually. We can have him stop right here and he can be cured with a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple. And thankfully, in going and getting the golden apple, the guy has not despawned or, and neither has that zombie down there, which is good news. I will probably have to get these supplies easily within reach when I do this more permanently, but now we can cure this guy and we could even have some iron bars or something drop around him to make sure that the curing process happens as quickly as possible. And once again, the curing process seems to have pushed him through the floor, which is a little bit strange, but once we put the lectern back in front of him, he should hopefully remember that his calling in life is to be a librarian. Right now, he doesn't seem to have any trades available to us, perhaps because he can't pathfind to the workstation, but maybe once we dig him out of this block here, he might remember a little bit about his former calling. Either that, or some of the other villagers around here are seeing it and are still deciding to become librarians. Perhaps this guy in the box over here, or maybe it's just too late in the day for him to pick up a profession. We'll see. But evidently, the structure of this place needs to change a little bit to accommodate the fact that they seem to leave the minecart whenever they change state, whether it's into a zombie villager or back into a villager from a zombie. We will see what we can do about that. In the meantime, though, the mechanics here are pretty straightforward, and hopefully once this guy recalls he is a librarian, we'll be able to get some decent trades out of him. Yes, there we go, although, ah, oh, we didn't lock the trade, unfortunately, before we cured him, so he is giving us discounts, but not on the trades he initially started with. Dang it. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit of a rookie mistake, one that I should have been prepared for, but hopefully if we break and replace this workstation a few times, we should get some different trades from him, of course, once night falls. Hopefully once the workday starts, he will forget his his librarianship and we can start breaking and replacing the lectern until we get the trades we want from him. Either way, we're going to get some pretty hefty discounts now that he has been cured and I'm pretty sure those will last. And if they don't, well, I guess we can put him back through the process one more time. There we go. He's forgotten his librarian stuff. Let's see if we can get some decent trades out of him now. I really wish I'd locked in that Thorns 3 book, but hey, infinity for one emerald ain't bad. At this point, most of the book trades are going to cost us one emerald. Some of the higher tier trades, the ones where you might expect to pay 64 emeralds per book are probably going to be a little bit more expensive. I think some of the uh, the ones like Sharpness 5 and so forth are going to have... There we go. We've got Fire Protection 4 there. 51 emeralds normal, 21 emeralds with the discount. That is worth having. It's not reducing it to one emerald per book, but it's still pretty great. There we go. That's the stuff I'm talking about. Unbreaking 3 for a single emerald. That is one that is worth locking in. So let me grab some books, let me grab some emeralds, and let's trade ourselves a ton of unbreaking books. And all we need to do is do that trade just once. Oops, uh, I threw some books at him there. <laughs> all we need to do is do that trade just once, and this guy's trades are going to be locked in permanently. Like I said, even if he were to be zombified again, we wouldn't have any trouble with his trades. And now we've locked that in, we can probably send him off into whatever version of the trading hall we want to cook up. I will come back around here and take my books back though. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and just like that, we have 14 unbreaking books. He's got Lure 1 as a follow-up trade. He's also got the trade where we can give him one book for one emerald. That's looking pretty nice. And I think this is going to be a very, very useful relationship to have. I think we are going to have to do some refinements to this process, especially considering that that zombie has just despawned on us. Oh well, I'm sure we can recruit another one and potentially give him a sword or something like that so that he can zombify the villagers even faster just by attacking them with a slightly higher attack weapon in his hand. 
And I need to make a couple of refinements to the system to make sure that we can automate track switching and stuff like that. But overall, this is looking like a pretty promising setup to have as a permanent addition to the input for our trading hall. For my next experiment, can you cure a baby zombie villager? In fact, do babies even turn into baby zombie villagers? I'm not entirely sure. And yeah, okay, it looks like it has... Oh, <laughs> the baby zombie has infected and oh gosh, he ran out the side. I forgot baby zombies were a different height. Okay, it looks like we get the chance to do the same thing again. And in the interest of containing the baby zombie villager, I'm going to block that off. <laughs> And that means that the zombie's attention is going to be directed towards the villager for the time being. And then I'm going to try my best to uh, block this up so that the baby villager can't get through and out anyway. And hopefully <laughs> we should be able to see what happens. Because I'm interested to find out if a baby villager will grow up into a full-fledged villager. And then if they will actually have any of the... Uh, if they'll have memories that they were cured in the first place. Oh gosh, what's happening? Where are they? I can't tell. Oh, hi. Hi there. Um, you are kind of taking damage on the ceiling there. Can I, can I help you with that? Okay, the question now is if we cure this baby zombie villager. Okay, it looks like it should convert back into a regular villager and then when it grows up, is it going to have discounts? That's the main thing I'm concerned about right now. This is such a weird experiment. I feel really bad. I also brought some spare iron golems over from where they were hanging around near the base of the iron tower and I'm a little bit worried that one of them is going to spot the zombie, is going to walk over this wall that I've hastily built around here and is going to uh, attack this baby zombie villager. I'm going to have to literally babysit the zombie villager right now because I don't want it to despawn but I want to show you guys the footprint of the building that I'm working out here because this is going to be our new trading hall, the corn exchange. It's going to be a quite a large oval shaped building and I'm really excited to get started on building it. Okay, and he is cured and he's still bouncing up and down in there because I'm pretty sure he would like to leave this place. I don't think they can get through this spot here and I think at this point we need to wait for this guy to grow up and see what kind of trades he has. <laughs> I feel so bad about zombifying a baby but the baby is now cured and hopefully should be reintegrated into villager society once he's grown up a little bit which shouldn't take all that long. Unfortunately there's nothing you can feed villagers or anything to accelerate the growth cycle so it is just going to be based on the usual amount that uh, villagers would grow and I've blocked off everything around here because I feel like baby villagers would be able to run through the system, probably get back into this pen with the zombie, even though the zombie is lowered back down into the ground now. We really need to do a lot of refinement to this to make sure it works. This is just the preliminary stages of the process in action, but hopefully this is giving you an idea of what's possible. While we're waiting for that guy to grow up, I can show you the footprint of our new trading hall, and it's looking pretty nice. I was actually quite surprised by how nice an oval looks. Normally, if you try and draw any shapes other than circles or squares it just kind of looks like you try to draw a circle and failed but I think the oval shape really comes across here and I think this is going to be a really neat shape for a trading hall it's going to be super big of course but that leaves us room for my ambition to basically get every single trade represented here in some way or another we will have all of the different books will have all of the possible variations on trades from things like farmers and butchers and and leather workers and that kind of stuff hopefully we will have a huge variety of villagers in here and hopefully that won't slow the game down too much because i know once you get a huge amount of mobs in one place it does tend to get a little bit hectic and we've already got a ton of villagers over there in the forest mansion but i think it's going to be nice to have just every possible trade at our fingertips whenever we want to and wow yeah this guy is taking a little while to grow up there we go, folks. We got him. Now let's place a lectern in front of this guy and see if he changes his trades. And yes, he does have discounts. Okay, so zombie kids, when they are cured and grow up, remember that they were zombie kids and that they've been cured, which is perfect for our needs. Now let's see if this guy can get... Oh, aqua affinity for one emerald. That's not too bad. Let's see what other trades we can get here. There we go. Efficiency 4 book for 21 emeralds down from 45. So that's about as good a discount as we're going to get on this book for now. We will <laughs> we'll see if we can get a better one in future, but I think 21 emeralds for an efficiency 4 book is not too bad. So we're going to go ahead and lock that trade in if I can find a spare book around here. Unfortunately, I have traded away a lot of them. There we go. Traded a couple of times for some paper. Locked in that trade, and now we have... Oh, it's, it's actually reduced the price because I've been trading some other stuff. Great. So we have 
have efficiency four for 19 emeralds and potentially even less if we do a little bit more trading with this guy. So this is the procedure so far. We are going to have to make a few refinements to it. We're going to have to figure out a way to get the villager into a separate cell so that it can be zombified safely without having it jump out of the minecart and run back down the tracks. We're going to have to figure out a way that we can get a streamlined curing process and also the local golems seem to have taken an interest in my zombie. So his days may be numbered. We might need to get a zombie that can kill them a little bit faster. Unfortunately, this guy cannot hold any items. So yeah, we're going to do our best to refine this process. And in the next couple of episodes, we will be seeing this trading hall come together a little bit more. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching my, me and my experiments <laughs> with zombies. I hope you did enjoy the episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.